We were one of the first also venture capital in Southeast Asia, right? 2010, we started with the first seed fund and then um, that, that's when we made the first investment into Tokopedia. Winter is coming. <laughs> sure, <coughs> sure. What, what was the message? We're, we're telling the people to start to be a little cautious with what's mm. going on, right? I guess so, so just just be ready. So so if, we, if you can, you know, uh, rank them like one, two, three, well, I mean, I, I think just in terms of size and opportunity today, right? I yeah. think commerce is still commerce. Uh, probably the largest, right? And okay. then uh, fintech is uh, yeah. commerce, fintech, and uh, sort of uh, uh, logistic or B two B is still the largest. Probably. You guys were the, the main sponsor of Indonesia Badminton yeah. Indonesia Open. We, we wanted to contribute as well to Indonesia in different ways, right? And this is in in, in sport, right? Wow. Okay. Uh, as a sport, right? So yeah. so uh, yeah, so so we, we started doing that. We sponsor uh, the you know um, I think the surf, surfing league and then the surfing world championship as well. Hello and welcome to another episode of Off The Script with me, Gundi Chayadi. And we have a very special guest today in Katadata Studio, uh, Rodrik Purwana, managing partner of East Ventures. And East Ventures obviously is one of the biggest uh, venture capital companies in Indonesia right now, managing 200 plus uh, companies. Yeah. yeah. And um, Rodrik graduated with a master degree from Stanford University. And he started his career at a venture capital firm yeah. in Silicon Valley in the U.S. before returning to Indonesia. He was a startup founder himself uh, before joining uh, East Ventures. And welcome to the show, Rod. And very nice to have you here with us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. You know, I mean, it's it's been um, more than 15 years since the last time we met. Uh, yes, no, <laughs> this is very special for me because, you know, I think we've known each other for a long time yeah, but yeah. have not met for a very, very, very long, long time. time. I so think the last time we met, it was at a barbecue time with all the Indonesian students at Stanford. Yes, and th back then we were still students. So, so back then still students. That was a yeah, lifetime yeah. ago now. And, and, and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of what uh, you, you've become, what you have achieved, and I think what East Ventures have achieved. Um, Obviously, Katadata is part of the ecosystem in East Ventures, so we, we thank you guys so much for the support all these years. No, absolutely, we we it's been great. We've uh, you know, we're very proud to have been a part of uh, Katadata. Yeah. So. Yes. Okay. So uh, before we begin, you know, congratulations. Uh, East Ventures just managed to get 550 million uh, new funding. Thank you. Uh, that was at the end of May. You know, yeah. and, and I think it's it's amazing that it happened during this time because yeah obviously market has been very choppy confidence on uh on startups on the tech skin ha has also been uh well eroded kind of in over the last two months uh, this is great news for is ventures this is great news for indonesia i guess it also means that uh, a lot of investors out there are still very confident rod about indonesian economy no, ab ab absolutely no, and, and thank you so much for that. I think we uh, we we announced the final close of the 550 million raise in uh, in May, but the process started uh, mid uh, last year around June July, uh, and then so since then we've uh, we've had a few first close and then a rolling close and then uh, before the final close uh, earlier this year. Um, so we've also started investing, I think, in parallel uh, to that as well. Uh, I think um, there's still a lot of excitement and interest in the tech space, yeah, especially yeah. in Indonesia. Uh, that's why I think, you know, for us, we were able to also fundraise from uh, limited partners uh, yeah. from around the world this time. Right. So yeah. we have LPs from uh, Singapore, from Japan, from U.S. and Europe as well. Yeah. 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 And I, I guess what's um, what was really exciting for me was after that, uh, announcement of the the funding uh, Wilson Chuacha who is the co-founder of yeah. his ventures mentioned in his social media you know that winter is coming <laughs> sure <coughs> sure what, what was the message that that you guys or Wilson and you guys were trying to convey with that you know yeah 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 no of course of course no i i think i think uh, of course i think i think so much is uh, you know that 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 sort of sentence has been used quite a bit as yeah. well right that yes, yeah. um in the space as well right i think we're coming off uh, close to sort of 10 years of low interest rate environment where you know uh, mm -hmm. funding and supply of capital has been quite high right yeah. uh, in indonesia in particular uh, it seems like at least right for the past 10 years as the startups grow everything has been going up and up and up right yeah, so yeah. Uh, i think i think what has happened in the past 6 months right uh, and and this is globally as well 
with uh, you know uh, supply chain issues, right? Inflationary problems, geopolitical risks, right? With uh, yep. with the war in Russia, uh, there there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of movement going back from uh, risky assets to more traditional assets yep, as well, definitely, right? Yeah. So and you know as as interest rates go up and whatnot, uh, you know to com- to uh, to uh, to address inflation, right? So, so we're we're seeing some of that as well, and we're we're telling the people that we, you know, uh, whether it's our founders, whether it's our ecosystem, or whatnot, to start to be a li- cautious with what's mm. going on, right? Mm. So, um, so so that's why I think that message was there, right? So mm. so winter is winter is coming, right? I guess <laughs> so. So just just be ready, right? Yeah. I think you know. So uh, yeah. it's okay. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Indonesia we don't have a winter, uh, yeah. right? There's a lot of parts of the world that have winters, and people do go through winters every year, right? Yeah. So yeah. and it's it, you know you can go through it, but you have to yeah. be ready for it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I I guess we'll talk a bit more about this uh, asset. Price correction and sure. so on, yeah. but I, I want to get your sense about this, um, the fact that you guys now are probably shifting towards more growth strategy, right? You want to allocate more of your fund in the mm. the growth stage of yeah. the companies. Yeah, uh, yeah. May, may, may so yeah. Let me talk a little bit about that, right? Mm. I think I think uh, in terms of the number of companies we invest in, mm. we'll still uh, invest more companies in the early stage. Okay, think, right. Okay. But because uh, the typical check size for a growth company is much bigger than a than a seed stage, yeah. the growth fund is bigger than the early stage fund, yeah. right? So, but uh, but you know, uh, we invest probably fifty to seventy five companies from each fund of the seed stage, mm-hmm. and maybe twenty five to thirty companies from the growth stage the growth for stage. Each, each fund. Okay. Okay, so in terms of the the, the focus, mm. there has not been any change or at all, like over the past one mm. year. Or uh, are you guys trying to go into more into growth, or uh, how how does mm. it how does it go? Uh, yeah, no, I think I think the strategy has remained the same. I mm. think um, so. We're looking to back you know the best founders out there, right? Yeah, uh, from seed and also from growth, right? Uh, a lot of our growth companies come from the seed stage, yeah. so we leverage our ecosystem in 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 terms of doing that as well, right? But I think in terms of strategy, it's 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 quite similar. Uh, we are uh, we are investing predominantly in Indonesia, uh, even though we can also invest in other parts of Southeast Asia as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think now that we're we've separated the fund, so we have an early stage and a growth stage, right? So I think we're focusing on those two areas, right? So to have some continuity as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rod, c- could you also speak a little bit about the the transformation of East Ventures? Mm. I, I know you guys were a little bit like separated in uh, is it mm. three or four entities, and then now you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, kind of sure. Uh, yeah, I think I think when when you know, and I think we have uh, um, you know when when East Venture was ter- first started right by uh, Wilson by Batara and Taiga in two thousand and nine, mm. mm. we were one of the first also venture capital in Southeast Asia, right? And there's uh, East Ventures Japan, which is uh, which still uh, is around today, right? Uh, so they're somewhat uh, somewhat more independent to the Southeast Asia team, but it's still around, right? Yep. So that that was the inception in two thousand and nine, right? Two thousand ten. We started with the first seed fund, and then um, th- that's when we made the first investment into Tokopedia, mm-hmm. right? Uh, since then, I think there's been successive funds as well on the seed stage. So we are investing out of our sixth fund, uh, which is called EV9 for okay. the early stage. Uh, the growth fund, uh, fund one, was first established in 2018 as a joint venture. Uh, between three entities, which is East Ventures, uh, SMDV, and then Yahoo Japan mm. Capital. Mm. So that was the inception back in 2018. 18. So we started in 2018. Uh, Fund one was a 250 million vehicle. Um, we finished deploying around somewhere around end of 2020. And then that's why um, early mid last year, we started uh, looking at the second fund for the growth fund. Uh, what changed since then and what was the evolution was uh, we dissolved the joint venture. Uh, so now ah, EV Growth is okay. part of East Ventures family. So ah, East okay. Ventures as a platform has two uh, two vehicles, which is the venture or seed fund and yeah. then the growth fund. Okay. Uh, and and I I officially joined East Ventures right. to manage the growth the, the side growth fund, yeah. beginning last year. Yes. Okay. So so this is has nothing to do with the change in the landscape. No. No. Globally. No. And, no. And it, in terms of focus of, of yeah. what's going ahead, it's just about. It's more internal administration, basically. Yes, yes. Administration. I think it's internal. It's focus also, right? And I think, um, you know, the the goal for us is to create a, a platform, right? Mm. Uh, so you know, today it's it's venture and growth. Who knows what else that you know uh, can yep. come out of this platform as well, right? Yep. But we wanted to uh, we wanted to focus on that as well, right? Uh, uh, as part of it as well, during the during this time period, right, we've actually doubled the team. So we have uh, close to sixty people now 60, across two offices okay. in Jakarta and Singapore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. <coughs> so 
let's talk about this asset prices. Sure. Uh, you, you mentioned obviously global inflation picks up, uh, mm. r- interest rates have, have gone up mm. well pretty much uh, across the world right now. Mm. And that means the cost of money has also gone up, right? Yes, and, and as of a, course. As a, as a result, I think uh, more and more uh, startups are finding it hard to get mm. um, uh, new funding mm. or even uh, mm. uh, st- original funding. And and that have really caused asset prices mm. correction mm. across all markets. You name it, right? Um, yeah. Stock markets, yeah. uh, Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, on, crypto, uh, all this, crypto, yeah. whatever. Even yeah. even uh, uh, luxury watches have also yes. corrected the price yes. of that. Yes. How how worried are you guys mm. um, about your portfolio of companies? Yeah, especially yeah. in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, I think I think of course we're not shielded from what's going on globally yeah. for sure, right? Yeah. So uh, there is definitely cause to be uh, worried as well. But I think we want to make sure we're cautiously worried, right? While yeah. keeping some sense of optimism, right? Because I think. In general, for us, what we do is also, uh, you know, we, we have to keep some of that optimism, I think, right, as mm. we invest also in startups. Um, uh, I think uh, I think a lot of this, uh, the first thing that falls is uh, definitely on the public side. So if you look at the public tech valuations, right, it has corrected right. significantly, right, especially right. in the U.S. market, China, yeah. maybe yeah. other markets as yeah. well, right? Um, the private market lacks the public market a little bit, right? So it's yeah. not as drastic today as uh, what's going on in the public market. Yeah. Um, so we're starting to see that, right? Uh, we're starting to see uh, companies being um, repriced. I think valuation expectations are, are um, coming down as well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of that because growth expectations is uh, is decreasing as well because mm-hmm. of the interest rate environment, right? So, so it's only natural, I guess, right? Um, but uh, but so far Indonesia and and to a certain extent Southeast Asia we haven't seen as much repricing as other parts of the world right mm. uh, and and that may be due to you know I think uh, the economy as well in in Southeast Asia is still relatively slightly better than mm. other other mm. parts of the world the right? size of the domestic economy size of the domestic economy and then the stage right I mean we're starting off a much smaller base right. as well right? right for the for the technology uh, industry in Indonesia right so and then the past two quarters Indonesia was still growing GDP by right. Five percent or so, right? Yeah. Compared to like U.S. or other areas where either have declined or are declining. Right? Yeah. So, um, I- in terms of valuation, uh, in terms of you know, you mentioned about listed and and the private side, mm. and of course, when we talk about listed, uh, I think uh, we can't run away from talking about Goto. Right? Of, course. of course. Yes. Yes. Um, it's been a roller coaster ride for yeah. Goto shares. Yeah. Over the last uh, when was it? They I think they listed at end of April, right? Yes, and, yeah, so yes. It's been two months. Yeah, roller coaster. What what do you guys learn from it? Like, yeah. you know, wh- what is what is the yeah the learning point that we should pick up and perhaps for your you know future potential uh, IPOs? I don't know, Traveloka or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean I think I think it was a very significant milestone first and foremost, right? Mm-hmm. I think the you know. Uh, Bukalapak paved the way, I think, last year, right? Uh, and I think you know there are some challenges with where their share price are at. But then, uh, for for GoTo, it's one of the largest companies uh, to ever go public, uh, right, right, in Indonesia as well. So it was a significant milestone right. because Tokopedia was our first investment. So for yeah. us as well as one yeah. of their first investors. Uh, and so and it's such a household name, right? I mean, Gojek <laughs> and Tokopedia. Absolutely, uh, together, right? absolutely, yeah. and then they have to uh, go through a lot of hoops, right? Regulatory as well to be able to do that, right? So they were able to do a green shoe. They were able to do multiple voting shares, right? Mm. Uh, so uh, they paved the way for uh, a lot of other companies to be able to uh, eventually list also in the public market, right? They also show that you know Indonesia market is big enough and deep, big enough and deep enough to be able to. Uh, IPO in the local market, right? So, so I think it's a, a lot of firsts for uh, for uh, for the country as well, right? So on that end, it's very exciting, right? Um, I think the challenge, of course, in uh, in the benchmarks as well, right? Yeah. So I think uh, for for global investors, not a lot of them uh, know as much about Indonesia, especially on the tech side as well, mm. right? So uh, so for them to really familiarize themselves, and then when when GoTo wanted to list their benchmark uh, companies, like you know. 
uh, maybe see, maybe Grab or yeah. maybe some of the other country, uh, the other companies in the US are trading at much less multiples, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so that made them uh, a little bit more difficult. So they had to work extra hard to, <laughs> to convince the investors to yeah. come in, I guess, yeah. right? No, but kudos to them. I think they were able to at least so far manage to kind of, um, you know, uh, less go out, right? And then, you know, uh, and then have, even though there's, uh, you know, fluctuations, I think, in the share price, uh, right now they're still trading uh, slightly above the IPO price. Yeah. Yeah. So was it just really uh, timing wise mm. that, that you think uh, the, the the most important lessons from from that roller coaster? Yeah, yeah. No, I, actually, I think I think uh, uh, timing was against them actually, yeah, right? Because yeah. I think they were originally grab, grab valuation was really bad. At the yes, start of the year, right? yes, right. They they had wanted to go out last year, I think, mm. right? And had they gone out last year, I think would have been probably slightly more positive or or easier, right? I think they took the harder path actually, right? Because off the back of again grab. Grab share price went down quite a bit as well, yeah. right? C also went down yes. quite a bit as well. Yes. Buka also Buka didn't do too exactly. well in Indonesia, right? So, uh, but I think they they saw that there is still a window today, right? Because yeah. if they don't take this window, they don't know when they're gonna be able to do that after this, right? So, mm. uh, so they 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 took the hard way, I guess, right? And then they you know regardless of the market condition, <laughs> they decide to go out and yeah. yeah. So here we are. Rod, Rod, on on a related note, uh, what's in store for Traveloka? I don't know. Traveloka, I think I think they're focusing on the business at the moment, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like I think it was very very uh, tough for them, especially for the pandemic, right? While a lot of our companies as well uh, uh, got accelerated during the pandemic, right? Because there's a lot of digital uh, acceleration and adoption during this time. Traveloka was uh, one it's of travel, the ones that well, it's got travel was hurt really, really bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. So I think. April or May, right? Uh, in in 2020, when the pandemic hit, lockdown starts to happen, right? Travel slows down to grinds to halt. Uh, their their business was was uh, was impacted very very heavily, right? And it was really tough times. And I remember back then as well, right? And you know, I think more than 90% of their booking went away overnight, right? So so what do you do, right? Uh, I think for them, they they focus on the right things. I think they shore up their balance sheet. They uh, were able to uh, you know uh, uh, focus on what matters the most as well, right? I think you know yeah. hotel and flights and whatnot and then even other things right yeah. so so now they're coming off the back of that right and i think uh q2 of this year right uh they should be back if if not close to the pre-pandemic levels right mm. so i think people want to travel again right yeah. i think uh, mm-hmm. there's not enough flights yet right but if you look at singapore if you look at the region if you look at other areas right i mean jakarta singapore the flights are there's not it's enough crazy. flights like before I mean, but crazy. the prices it's, it's, are prices crazy are right amazing yeah. prices are so crazy right hotels are the same right so yeah everywhere right uh, um, you know uh, bali is also starting to recover and whatnot so i think uh, for for traveloka the main focus for them for now is still on the business right uh yes there's been rumors and there's talks and whatnot and of course i think they would want to tap into the public market right uh where and when i think i'll leave it for the company sure I think, yeah, to, of course of course that, but yeah. i mean i think the the intention is still there absolutely um, absolutely but they, they also want to become like another super app mm. kind of and I, I wanted to ask you your opinion about this yeah. like you know yeah. um future of, of super apps uh we we, j- we know air asia has also just launched yeah. It's, yeah. its own uh, uh yeah payment yeah. gateway and all that uh what's your thought about yeah about super app? Yeah. i mean uh, do we have yeah. too many is it yeah too yeah. Uh, I think I think super apps are easier said than done, I guess, right? Mm. And I think whether you follow one of the models, right? Like US is very different, right? So you have one app for one thing, I guess, right? So you don't really have the similar concept, right? I think the first time people call super app was in China, right? When yep. you see like the WeChats of the world and yep, whatnot, yep, right? Yep. And and that's based on a, a, a high engagement model where you use chat all the time and then yep. you build on top of that, right? Yep. Uh, Indonesia probably follows closer to the China model, than, model the Uda, yeah. than the US model, right? Uh, so, so there's a lot of similarities there, right? I think uh, there is definitely challenges because so many companies wants to be exactly. super apps, right? Yeah, and then yeah. wants to take the mind share of the users, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, but but even uh, even for uh, larger companies and whatnot, right? like where where's go to, where's grab and whatnot. Um, people only visit the app for a few things only, right? So at, at some point, right, uh, you know, the, the fifth uh, function or the sixth or the seventh or the eighth might not be as useful for them, right? So so I think there there's still challenges, right? Uh, but having said that though, right, I think for, for Traveloka, they're looking at adjacent businesses or adjacent products that they're looking, right? So you, you, you book a flight, right? You go to a place and whatnot, and then, you know, you might need a car rental, you might need, uh, you know, a, a driver to go somewhere and whatnot, right? So they have that, right? And then you book the hotel tell as well right once you're there uh, you say you go to Bali for a few nights right you want to eat right so that's how they have, they have travel yeah. called eats right yes. 
and then you might want to have entertainment right and and other things as well so you might want to visit you know uh, either, either museums either uh, you know uh, uh, events and whatnot as well so that's what yeah. they're doing kind of like so they're building a cr- uh, building around the periphery of what their core businesses are I think right but yes I think that that that's uh, something that at least they're building uh, towards uh, for uh, super yeah. yeah is it the market too congested in the, you think at, at the moment or you think Indonesia can yeah can I mean a, a, a I, few more I think there, there there could be a few right because I think the the base use case is slightly different as well right mm. so uh, but uh, and 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 so so I think we'll see we'll see a few of them doing okay right but there won't be too many I guess right because yeah. ultimately the whole notion of it is like if you're very comfortable with one or two or or maybe three I guess super app right then you yeah. you focus on that those ones so not, if right? eventually uh, Consolidation needs to most happen likely, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob, uh, I'm sure you guys are still very much bullish about Indonesia's yeah, economy, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I just want to s- hear like what specific sectors are you guys looking at right now? Uh, yeah. You guess where where you think you should be focusing more in yeah. the next three to five years? Is it is yeah. it fintech? Is it I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, in- Indonesia's been very lucky, right? I think like you know. Uh, I, even though uh, there's mm. a lot of challenges in the global economy, right? I think you know, given a few of the commodities that Indonesia produce uh, are doing quite well, mm-hmm. coal, uh, palm oil, and other others uh, as well, right? I think you know the economy is still relatively okay, right? Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of uh, focus going back to some of the traditional as well. But digital, is because the base is also small, is still growing pretty rapidly, right? So we're looking at multiple things. I think in commerce, right? We're starting to look at much more vertical commerce, social commerce, mm-hmm. um, D2C, direct to consumer brands as well, right? Uh, fintech is definitely very interesting, right? Uh, so uh, within that sort of lending and whatnot, credit tech, I guess, right? So there's yeah. uh, different areas, right? Uh, People are doing buy now, pay later, right? Yep. For consumer side, there's also SME investments, right? We invested in a, a, a Sharia digital bank as well, uh, not that long ago, right? Uh, there's wealth management tech, right? There's also insure tech that is quite uh, quite interesting. Uh, we've been taking much closer look also in terms of edu tech and uh, health tech and health tech as well, uh, digital health, right? Yeah, so these two areas, I think, especially uh, during the pandemic, uh, really exposes some of the challenges in the yeah. infrastructure yes. uh, I guess in Indonesia. Uh, right? Health, so public health system, I think um, that ab- was uh, absolutely jarring. Uh, ab- absolutely right. So I think, I think you know, uh, there there is uh, a lot of uh, focus in terms of looking into that as well, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the challenges, like uh, you know, uh, monetization, is still there uh, across these two industries, right? So we're monitoring them carefully. Uh, so, but yeah, but but uh, we're we're looking at those sectors as well, right? I mean, other ones are uh, you know, logistics, B two Bs, software. Uh, it will it will start to kind of uh, come up as well, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe the last one, and I think you know, it, it it's maybe a little bit hold back with uh, Web three, I guess, right? Which, uh, <laughs> yeah, with, with the recent developments uh, yes. in terms of the asset prices. Yeah. yeah. So so if we if you can you know uh, rank them like one two three, uh, yeah. what would you what would you pick at this time? Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, I I think just in terms of size and opportunity today, right? I yeah. think commerce is still commerce. Uh, probably the largest, right? And okay. then uh, fintech is uh, yeah. commerce, fintech, and uh, sort of uh, uh, logistic or B two B is still the largest probably today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess commerce obviously because of the size of the yeah. domestic economy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fintech because just because yeah. Yeah, Indonesia is yeah. well the bank the bank population is still very low. Yeah. Right? Financial yeah. literacy is still quite low. Yeah. There's still a lot of uh, a road to to manage. Yeah, and then and then if you look at uh, commerce, right? I think we're starting to look a lot at uh, agri commerce as well, right? So uh, Indonesia is a very agriculture based country, right? So there's a lot of potential uh, bottlenecks or inefficiencies that potentially technology or digital can solve as well. So yeah. Yeah, in- interesting. I bet you know. I'm I'm just wondering. I mean. Uh, how how do you handle all this? Like how Sir uh, Roderick handles his life, where he has to think about all so many uh, uh, sectors in. <laughs> no, no, that's that's a very good question. I think I think uh, that's why we have sixty people. I think in the organization <laughs> now, right? I think yeah. so. No, we we've. We, we we have a very good team, I think, right? Uh, both in uh, Indonesia and in Singapore, right? And I think we, we we're starting to uh, uh, focus more and more, right, on different areas, right? So uh, we have uh, we have investment teams, right? We have a value creation team as well that uh, works with the companies and make sure to optimize the the value as well, right? We have a full support and back end, right? Uh, 
we even have a we have a, a media team as well that yeah. that handles a lot of exposure and whatnot as well. So so we 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 have really good team, uh, I think. And and you know the only way you can you can scale up and do things as well, right? And uh, you know in a way, even though we we're, we're uh, we've been around for over ten years, right? For East Ventures, uh, we are also a startup in that sense, right? Like yeah. our founders, right? So I think we need to evolve and grow, and then you know yeah. Uh, yeah. Bro, uh, but but tell me, you know, how, how different are things right now uh, compared to I don't know, fifteen years ago when you started in Silicon Valley mm. working as a venture mm. capital. Firm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I yeah. Mean, I never got to ask you back then. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. How, how different have things yeah. gone? And M- maybe maybe two perspective on that, right? From the market perspective, from a personal perspective, right? From a market perspective, right? I think U.S. is a very advanced uh, mm. uh, ecosystem. Right, uh, yep. with you know, um, you know the 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 funding uh, supply of funding as well, right? The number of entrepreneur, the mindset, and whatnot, right? So, it was very very uh, interesting to see that as well, right? And I was there uh, when the 2008 financial crisis happened, yep. right? Yep. People starting to do triage and whatnot, right? But uh, even during that time, I think people still do investments, right? I think there's a flight to quality, right? And then you yep. know, uh, you just have to pick and then the terms uh, and the whatnot. Good companies. But yeah, th- things still happen, right? But but definitely, I think you know, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, the reason why it's the center of a lot of this uh, uh, movement or activity. This is just, it is a very unique place, right? And then it's a very built up ecosystem, right? You have world class universities around, right? You have talent, right? You have uh, ecosystem, you have you have money, you have capital, you have resources, you, so you have a little bit of everything, right? So, mm. so that was that was very interesting to see uh, to to see during that during that time, right? I mean, and on a personal level, right? For me, it, it's great because I get to learn everything, right? <laughs> I, I remember my, my my boss back then told me like, you're, he said, look, you're very lucky, you get paid to learn. He says, right? So uh, I I didn't I didn't. Uh, I didn't appreciate it back yeah. then, but I think you know. I think that was uh, you know that was very valuable um, uh, experience back then, right? And yeah. I think I think personally though, the the main difference uh, for me was uh, uh, back then I was starting my career and whatnot. I'm not a decision maker right mm. back then, so mm-hmm. so it was like, look, uh, yes, you know, uh, 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 it it's it, it's hard to see some of these things happening to the companies and whatnot. But there's always somebody else that helped make the decision for me and whatnot right back then, right? Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, today, though, right? Today, I think you know, uh, I I can't I can't just rely on other people and whatnot. So it's like, you know, I have to make decisions. Well, now, now you have you that. have uh, a, team, a responsibility but, and whatnot. But the responsibility right? changed, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly, changed. right. So so I think I think that that that's that as well, right? I think for the Indonesian market, right, today, right, uh, it's still relatively early, right? I think you mm. know, but but it's also much more friendly as uh, in in some ways, right? So. Uh, I think we have a pretty healthy ecosystem, right? In terms of uh, founders, in terms of uh, investors, in terms of businesses that works with them, right? Uh, customers and whatnot, right? So, uh, quite excited to see what's gonna happen. I think the next uh, three, five, ten years ahead as, ahead as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I, I guess you know, if if you could, I don't know, if there's like a time machine or something, mm-hmm. and you could, you could move back to f- fifteen years ago. Be a managing partner in mm. in a venture capital in in the yeah. U.S. Yeah. Would you think you prefer that, or would you think you prefer to live at the, the current moment in Indonesia? You know, exciting, it's yeah. still developing, yeah. but uh, yeah, not so uh, deve- not so uh, as as high tech as what it, it was yeah. in the U.S. Back, yeah. even back then. I I I think I would still pick the same path. I think right. Okay. I mean. Uh, I think one of the reasons I, I I came back as well, right? I think I felt like you know at least uh, in the U.S., right? I think, look, uh, I think there's a lot of great people there that yeah. you know, but everybody graduates from yeah. Berkeley, Stanford, and whatever as well in the U.S., right? And I think uh, to a certain extent, right? I think it, it would have been probably harder to to break into a certain position and whatnot in the U.S., right? But I think in Indonesia there's a lot more to do as well, right? And I think you know I I came back during uh, you know during a time I I went back and did private equity because yeah. the venture capital market in Indonesia back when I came back 2009 wasn't as developed, was right? Was not so existing. Ex- it was not really yeah. it wasn't really there. So yeah, yeah. so I did private equity instead, right? But uh, but it was it's been very rewarding to to be a part of the sort of the growth and uh, yeah. right trajectory of this ecosystem, right? I think from the early early days if you will right and yeah. then till where where no, I guess today and I, still, I, yeah. I mean I uh, you know I, I respect you guys because obviously uh, Indonesia rise in the digital mm. economy scene mm. I think its ventures played a big role in that you know all, over the last especially over the last five eight years I would say um, and you know it, it's something that I think a lot of people would admire as well right yeah um, I, I, I want to go back to this idea about uh, growth and sure. going forward. Yeah, 
how important uh, well maybe i should ask how much more important is the bottom line hmm. going forward uh, compared to say the last three yeah, yeah. to five years yeah bro. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think. So, so, if you look at the the face of investments, right? I yeah. mean, our companies, I guess, right? I mean, it goes from an idea, and then, right, and then you go from a product and a service, right? And then you you um, you know you prove the market, you you scale up, right? And then all the way into a a growth and sustainable company, I guess, right? So, so there's there's a there's a, a um, there's a natural path, I guess, for companies and whatnot, right? Now, regardless of what what companies, whether B 2 C, B 2 B, and whatnot, right? Eventual goal is always the same, right? Mm. To get to sustainability and then you know to have a positive bottom line, right? Now, for some models, you require a lot more capital to do that, right? And then so that's where you hear like, okay, oh, companies are burning money <laughs> and whatnot, right? When are they going to get to profitability and whatnot? I think I think uh, uh, for a lot of companies, right? Um, now they need to focus a lot more on making sure they're just doing their core. Mm. So the thing is like when 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 you get handed capital by investors a lot of money right and market seems doing quite well or whatnot you tend to try to do ah. other things outside of your course you, well you're, you're right? tempted, t- yes, you're tempted yes, to try something yes. else and and you when you have when you have more money than less sometimes you are less careful maybe less prudent with your spending and whatnot right so so this is a good time a good reminder for uh, a lot of the founders as well right to make sure that you go and focus back on your core business right uh, make sure you don't spend excessively on things you don't need as well right now now can you turn things that were really maybe uh, negative to positive one night mm. most likely not right mm. so you'll still have to kind of go through your your you know your growth and whatnot right but at least you know that 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 path and clear path to uh, sustainability should be there lah, right mm. and whether it's one two three years right i think and what are the plans for you as a company to do that right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh f- you know, uh, interesting that you mentioned about sustainability mm. right? and and i know is ventures is is getting more and more into uh, sustainable development ensuring that the companies in the ecosystem are also adopting uh, sustainability strategy going forward um, could you share a little bit about uh, I don't know uh, sort of projects or whatnot that that you guys have come up with um, on the sustainability part. Sure, if I may. Yeah, I think I think on the on the sustainability end, right? I think uh, as a firm, we've always tried to do something that's impactful. You know, looking at sustainability, but we never really measure it. I guess, right? I think only in the past maybe twelve months or so, we started doing that, right? Mm. So we started putting more emphasis on sustainability, yep. uh, ESG, putting a framework together, and looking at the, how we invest and whatnot, right? Yep. So we've been doing uh, two things, right? I think uh, one definitely with uh, with the help of Kata Data, yep. which is the yep. digital competitiveness index, index yeah. right? So uh, you know that that's been going for. A few years now, and then that shows sort of the uh, the digital readiness of each of the provinces and the large cities, also and the cities in Indonesia, right? And yeah. then you know we we track that as well, right? As a way to measure uh, what impact, if any, are uh, some of our portfolio companies doing as well, right? And now this year, for the first time, we have a sustainability report as well, yeah. right? So we issued yeah. a sustainability report. Yeah. Uh, and if you're interested, I think you can download it at our website. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so we're we're starting to take a much more active uh, approach at least right uh, in terms of uh, looking at um, sustainability ESG and impact as well yeah. and is that something that you're going to imp- uh, well uh, should I say impose on your companies um, the founders to yeah, also yeah, be yeah, more yeah 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 it's a spectrum right so I think we're, we're not an impact fund right mm-hmm. so we're not it's not a requirement right, per right. se and whatnot, right but I think uh, I think it's it's a uh, it's a progression. So we're slowly figuring out like what what at what stage and whatnot. Right? We definitely want to share some of the uh, impact thoughts and findings that we have with our founders as well, right? Mm-hmm. And we do encourage and invite them to be part of this sort of journey more on sustainability and whatnot. Yeah. But we're not really, at least at the moment, not imposing any sort of restrictions or anything around yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, and I, you know, Rod, I think uh, well, one of the things. Uh, the interesting thing about about uh, East Ventures in recent time, obviously, was that you guys were the the main sponsor of Indonesia Badminton yeah. Indonesia Open. Yeah. And, and, and I remember I was watching with my uncle, and he was mm. asking what me, <laughs> "What is this East Ventures?" Right. And, and I guess that that shows how yeah. things have changed and have yeah. evolved over the last I don't yeah. know, twenty years or so. And, yeah. and this is a big thing. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that yeah. The no, venture absolutely. capital uh, is, uh, is absolutely. Is the uh, is the main sponsor of the main sporting event in Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, right? and, yeah. Uh, what 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 was the? 
I mean, I know it's well, it's a marketing thing, but uh, is there more than that? Like that, no, you, that you wanted uh, to? No, absolutely. No, I think I think we we you know uh, as you said, right? Badminton uh, is one of the largest sport in Indonesia, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, this is coming off of uh, two years of 2020. There wasn't uh, an Indonesian Open. Yeah. 2021, there was in Bali, but it was a uh, no crowd, yeah, right? There's a bubble. Small there's scale, no crowd, yeah. right? Yeah. Much smaller as well. So it's the first time in after a few years, right, that we have it back in Istora Senayan, right? Sort mm-hmm. of uh, a majestic stadium, right, right where the right. atmosphere is just yes. very, very good, right? Yes. And and so uh, you know, and and we 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 do believe like there's a lot of parallel, I think, you know, when, when <laughs> in terms of what we do as investors, and then the the sport of uh, you know badminton, right? So yeah. so we think look, look uh, you know, we we wanted to be a part of uh, part of this, right? So this was a. Uh, This was our way of saying, okay, look, uh, we, we we wanted to contribute as well to Indonesia in different ways, right? And this is in in, in sport, right? I think to a lesser extent, earlier this year we also started uh, doing uh, started supporting uh, surfing as well. Wow, okay. uh, as a sport, right? So yeah. so uh, yeah, so so we we started doing that. We sponsor uh, the you know um, I think the surf surfing league and then the surfing world championship as well, mm-hmm. uh, and then now we're doing uh, badminton as well, right? So uh, sport again is a big part of. Uh, yeah. um, health i guess right and then yeah and then for indonesia badminton is is very ingrained right uh i was at the i was at the stadium uh watching right uh, and it was it was very very exciting right yeah amazing huh yeah. Yeah, yeah i i guess i guess it's also to me it's also a way to reach out to uh, yeah common indonesians like you know my uncle and i don't know my, my yeah my, yeah my dad's yeah. generation yeah and um, um They, yeah. they, they, well, people know Gojek, people know Tokopedia, people yeah, know but they don't know it's ventures. But they don't know it's ventures, right? Yeah. yeah. And and for a lot of time, people say, oh, you know, but it's hard to explain what we do. And one of say it's okay. As long as they <laughs> ask, what is his ventures? And then, you know, at least they, they're yeah. aware of the brand and whatnot, right? I think, you know, it's yeah. a good step towards that direction. Good step, yeah. Uh, maybe on, 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 you know, uh, maybe slightly on a personal level, I guess. Um, Uh, I'm a father of three. Uh, we have we have like a ten ten month old baby that she refused to sleep the whole night. So that keeps me awake mm. at night. What keeps uh, Rojik Purwana awake at night? You know? yeah. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of things, I guess, right? But but uh, uh, I. I I I did this like I think you know I I there's so many things going on right and there are some that are in your control there are some that's outside your control right I think up to a few years ago right I it was you know I I keep you know there's always something right so so you know uh, one day it's a company one day it's a uh, you know one day it's a founder one day it's something else right so there's uh-huh. all these problems right and I think I think you know the 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 pandemic especially right I think during March or April uh, during 2020 right that's when I realized right? I was at home it's lockdown right everything started like either either you know either worse about to implode or what not like travel local going down so bad right some other portfolio founders calling us and all what to do and i said look there are things that you can control that one you need to solve right there's things you cannot control then you know you just have to kind of you know kind of uh uh Right run along. with it, right? Yeah, right along, along as well, right? And and I think sleep is very important, right? So now I try to at least, you know, if you, if you <laughs> if you if you don't sleep, right, you wake up, the problem is still there, yeah. and then but you're very agitated, and yeah. it's hard for you to try and do things, right? But if you sleep at least well enough, I guess, right? So in the morning you're somewhat refreshed. So the problem is also there, but at least hopefully you can kind of think clearer, and then hopefully you know start to find some solutions, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 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 now that travel is uh, pretty much open again, yeah. I'm sure you guys will be traveling a lot. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I- investors and all that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is yeah. That, yeah. No, absolutely. I think. I think. Well, uh, I've. I've. I, I took advantage of the pandemic, so I went to Bali quite a bit of times, right? Because mm-hmm. I think you know you can work from anywhere during that time, right? So I. I choose to work from Bali a lot of times. Yeah. So spend time between Jakarta and Bali. Uh, I've been spending quite a bit of times back and forth to Singapore, right? I think. It is opening up, uh, even though again I think we mentioned that you know flights are not as easy to get, and then you know it's the the cost is pretty high. But at yeah. least, uh, at least some of the requirements during the pandemic, like quarantine, right, the pre-departure test, uh, you know, uh, arrival test and whatnot, has been sort of removed for now. Yeah. So, so it, it it's somewhat somewhat back to normal, not not fully, but somewhat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Rod, maybe just you know, uh, sort of like a closing uh, question and sure, discussion sure. for for this show. Uh, I just want to get your sense in terms of uh, what do you want to see next, maybe in the next, you know, three to five years. Mm. What sort of things that you you want to get your inspiration from, mm. and what do you hope for in terms of your companies under the ecosystem of East Ventures and so on? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think you know. Even though I think you know, we we've 
kind of come a long way as well, right? Mm-hmm. I think we're still in early days, I guess, right? In terms of the ecosystem, right? So I would love to see the ecosystem evolve and, and develop uh, a lot further as well, right? I think, you know, in terms of, uh, we still have a lot of first-time entrepreneurs, right? With their companies and whatnot, and they haven't exited, right? Ideally, you know, they exit at one point, right? Becomes mentor, second-time entrepreneur, third-time entrepreneur as well, right? Uh, or become investors for that matter as well, right? Uh, you know, so so the digital ecosystem as well, as well right? I think companies now uh, are, are starting to adopt more and more uh, technology, but it's still not fully there, right? So, so hopefully the next few years, right, we'll still we'll, we'll start to see that as well. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll start to see exits as well, right? So uh, a thriving sort of digital economy, I think, would mm-hmm. be ideal, right? Mm-hmm. I think for the companies, right? I think yeah, just you know, I think back back to what I was saying earlier, right? I think the key for them is just to focus on what they do, right? I mean, like. Startup journey is very difficult, right? And yeah. then, so you have to be really passionate and you have to be focused on what you do, right? So, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, so, so East Ventures is here to support the founders, right? And yeah. so so hopefully we'll be able to do that with more and more founders and for yeah. a very and, long and, time. And I, I, are you guys looking to, to, to exit perhaps? Uh, I, I think as a fund, we have to, yeah. right? I think naturally a fund has a fun life and whatnot, right? I think uh, it, it, would be, uh, it would be hypocritical of me to say <laughs> that we don't want to exit, right? Of course, we have yeah. to exit, right? I think the best time to exit is with the founders, to be honest, right? So a lot of times, uh, like in uh, M and A and whatnot, that's right. natural, right? For an IPO too, uh, at some point, you know, we we would exit, and then you know, other investors would take our place instead and whatnot, right? So yeah. we would love to exit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's it's been a great talking to, Likewise, to you, Rod, you yeah. know. I think uh, uh, it's been 20 years, but like I said, you know, I, I'm super super <laughs> excited, super. Respectful of uh, what you have achieved, what its ventures have have become, and hopefully, you know, people will 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 realize that its ventures is is also behind a lot of these uh, growth companies in in Indonesia, trying to make the the country even better. No, but but that's the key, though. Actually, we're only playing support, right? I think the real stars are the founders, the founders. and whatnot. So we're happy playing support for these companies as well. But okay. uh, hopefully, it's not another twenty years before we we <laughs> get to catch up again. But yes, uh, it was. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank great. you, Rod. Thank you for coming to the show. Appreciate it, and uh, I, you know, I, I trust you now. I'll maybe we'll invite you again for an- another time. I would love to come. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.